Hello, everybody. It's your friend James Shaw. We're doing what we do, which is talking to elite people doing elite things, and we're all in on events. These are great ways to reach out to your people. And so we've been working with a bunch of agents who are doing events at a high level. So you have ideas to choose from, playbooks to run. If you're an Inspire member, you get access to the step-by-step -step playbook on what to do. And we're going to look at another event today with our friend Marilyn Burke. Hello, Marilyn. How you doing? Hi, everyone. Good. I'm great. How Thank you? you for joining us. Tell us where you are and who you are and a little bit about your business. And then we're going to talk about your scarecrow stroll, which is really cool. I'm Marilyn from Massachusetts. That's how you can remember me easy. I've been doing this 20 years. Um, I was a former weight loss coach, owned a franchise, came into real estate and never left. And I love it. I love what Thank I do. And you do it at a high level and you love your community. Uh, you're very passionate about your community. You love your community so much. You once gave my entire family Patriots outfits, even though you know we're Colts fans. Like that's yes, how did. much you love your community. Uh, and, and then you came to my community. We live in Safety Harbor, Florida now. And you came down here for an event that we did in the fall. That's our business planning event. And you saw something that was going on here and said, ooh, I like this. And you went and took it into your hometown. Tell us about this event. Yes, I did. It's so... First of all, the decorations, I took every picture of all the decorations. I love art and I brought it to back with me and went before the select board. And I said, you have to see this. They have, I showed them all the pictures. I did a presentation. First I wrote to them. Now you have to understand our downtown area. I was born in Canton, grew up in Norwood and then raised my kids in Canton. So the downtown area, they spent, or we spent, I say we, a lot of money making sidewalks with beautiful lampposts. And when I say beautiful, they're very ornate. And um, so I was like, this will look so pretty in our downtown. And what it is, by the way, just so people don't miss out, this is a, you go and make, you have businesses make these scarecrows and you put them on the lampposts at fall time. And that's what that was happening here in Safety Harbor. And our main streets like yours, sidewalks, beautiful lamp post. And so it was just yep. this really cool thing. So when you saw it, you had, you went back and took it to the city and say, we should do this? I photographed every single one, all the sidewalk art. And I was so excited. And once I get an idea in my mind like that, I was like, this is awesome. I love Halloween. My children's birthdays are um, October 27th and December 4th. So when they were little... I would draw all the characters. I can draw really well. So I would draw the Disney characters, all the villains, and decorate the house. And we always had a, like a Halloween birthday, double birthday party for them. So it, it was Halloween was always kind of a special ho holiday because of how their birthdays fell. But I'm like, this is, it was, here's what was beautiful about it. Every vendor uptown opened up their business and I love that it was a stroll. People could go in, get candy, meet meet the community. I just thought it's it was such a cool idea. And Canton has that same thing. And then there's a mall area that I'm like, this is perfect. And remember, we were coming off the pandemic. So they hadn't done Halloween. They were doing trunk or treat. And I go, this will work out nice. And the businesses that want to participate can. And the others, if they don't want to, they don't have to. But everyone well, loved it. it was yeah, let's do a step-by-step -step then, Marilyn, on how to implement right. it. Because you went to the town and presented it and got the approval. But it's still, it's your event. Yes. And and this is an opportunity for businesses, whether they're on the main street or not, to get involved. Yep. Uh, what, they buy a lamppost, put a scarecrow on it, they can decorate well, it. Will you take us through step-by-step? -step? Yeah, I'll tell you the first year I did the who, what, when, where, why for the select board, broke it down. But basically, I ended up raising $15,000, and I was charging $1,000 a lamppost. So I door knocked every downtown business on foot, and I brought a flyer with me. And then I did this. We have a little mall called the Cobb Corner Mall. I did the mall area. So people that could participate did. Now, some people gave a very generous donation, but in order to decorate the pole, you had to give a thousand dollars. Well, it, it made such a big splash. The, all the money went to the food pantry. I didn't keep any of the money. And I bought and made this huge werewolf. So that was the entrance to the town. So the kids loved it. And it, it, it just, a lot of people called and said, I love your idea. 
So the next year that I did it, I had to think about what could I do differently. In the second year, I passed out the sign holders to the, each vendor so they could advertise it and get more involved. And then I lowered the price a little bit because we have actually 58 lampposts. So my goal was to get everyone filled. And I thought, okay, I got about 15, right? For, for the money I generated, 15 poles. How do I get more? So last year I got 38 poles that got decorated out of 58. And you so lowered the donation from a thousand to a hundred dollars to just get yes. more businesses in. Yeah. Um, and so this is a, one of those things where you just kind of play with your system and see what works. Tell us what your goal is for this year. It's all 58. So I already have, I'm going to see them on eight, May 28th. Last year I started in August. So I have to go before them, get on the docket. And there's a lot of stuff going on in our town right now. So anyway, I'm on for May 28th. So by starting earlier, what I'm also going to do is open it up to families and I'm going to change the price again. I think I'm going to go up to 250. Um, I haven't told anyone. So if this goes live before that, I'll have to make my final decision. So I, I, my goal is to get the Girl Scouts involved, the high school students involved, like clusters of groups to do one poll. So I started calling the high school, like my, my kids, one, um, one guy, Ed Amico, he does the guidance. So I thought like I could get Ed, the seniors have to do so many volunteer hours. They could help me make the displays because some people don't mind giving money, but they didn't want to make the display. So it does, there's, there's a few more intricacies to it that I'll explain, but um, yeah, my goal is to get 250 per poll. All right. And so you start, you're going to start earlier this year. You've said, you know, give yourself yes. a five or six month runway to get this done and yep. get it out. And so what, what's, what's the first thing you go to this, tell getting, us, tell us your getting, lead gen play for this. I just go door knock I make the flyers. My cyber backer makes them. I have everything done on a QR code. I have a website called Canton cares and they can go on the website. They can sign up through the sign holder. So I do all the work. I just drop and go. Some people give me a smaller gift card for the food pantry. So if they don't want to do the, the lamppost, they can, they can still donate. Um, I have to let the food pantry know that we started. And um, if the money goes right to them. So I don't have to handle any of the money, which I love. So it goes right to the food pantry. And they have to source it. There's, all the instructions are pre-written for everyone. So it's an easy button. Staples helps me make these large posters, but it's getting the commitments, James. That's a yeah. first step. Yeah, and you're going to give us all the stuff you hand out and the things that you do, and, yes. and our Inspire members will have access to it, which is great. So it's door knock first. You door create knock, a, and then yep. You create a flyer. Yep, and yeah. then and then it's the, so the rules of decorating. You have to be careful when you decorate the lamp post. You have to use a zip tie, no tape, so the paint doesn't come off. I'll, but here's what I've been doing. I got um, Canton Char National Charities League help me make displays because sometimes vendors, I was making the displays. So in addition to getting the money, then I would say, well, what kind of theme do you want? And I was making the first year, everyone could make their own sign. But last year, I wanted it to look a little bit more uniform. You know how in Safety Harbor, they were all pre-numbered? I, I numbered all the poles ahead of time. And then I made these corrugated cardboard, like almost like a directional sign on each pole. So it was big and visible and it had a number. So I've tightened up the system each year just to make it more colorful. So people see the empty pole and then they can claim it. Like I, I also thought like the ones in the center of town could be more prime, like prime real estate because they're more visible. So, so I, I like that. So you, what you're talking about, they're making their scarecrow that gets attached to the pole. Yeah. You're assigning the pole number to them, but you make a sign that maybe mentions the business and what's going on and where the money's going. Yes. And I love that. Now, is there a competition component to this? Like, is there, because yes, I think there, there, somebody there. can win a prize, right? Yes. I, I gave away prizes for the best, but I had everybody vote. So the cyberback created a QR code and they vote. So Canton Pickleball won last year because they had the strongest faction. 
but the year before it was Bank of Canton. And they had an amazing display and they're always the first stop and they get a, the corner right near the bank. So getting, here's what I found out. They'll compete for the better spots. So I thought, well, maybe I could jack up the price a little bit, just to help them donate more. Here's the other thing that happened, James, as a result, more people, the library tried to kind of piggyback on what we did. I'm a lot, I'm in the lions. So the lions also did a fundraiser two weeks before mine. So last year it was very competitive to get the money. And the good news is though, different subsections started getting involved in the food pantry because I put it in the Canton Citizen. They saw the advertisement around town and all these other groups were competing to get the publicity where we would, and it was all good. It's all going to the food pantry. So I love that people were really getting involved in it. It just seems like a fun way to engage the community. You get to go to businesses and businesses can choose whether or not they want to support yeah. it. You've got no judgment about that. And they get to donate straight to the food pantry. You're giving them a flyer they can put up that says they're participating and they've donated. Yeah. The city looks really nice that time of year. It's a fun, festive way to make the city look. It's getting the library involved and others involved, which is really fun and just yeah. a fun way to do it. But all you're really doing is you're the organizer of this. You set out the rules. They've got to make their scarecrow. They've got to maintain it you know during the time that it's up and all that kind of stuff the food bank gets supported there's a lot that goes on and again we've got a step-by-step -step playbook for all of our inspiring I'm very we'll show you how to do it yeah it's, but what what happens for you Marilyn what's the win for you I guess it's it's fun um, I'm hoping that I mean I'm from town so people know me um what so I can tell you, I didn't set out to win. I just thought it was a neat idea. And maybe you probably like, what? After all our... L well, but you said that you had 1,600 people who participated or, or came through and helped vote and stuff like that. Like, this is it's getting your name out in the community. It's not, you know, you're not out there going, who do you know from church or work? But you're just showing you're an agent in the community who cares about your community. That's well, a huge I did, win. So I did get some speaking engagement. Um, I, the Lions Club asked me to do a presentation. They asked me if I would join and help them fundraise. Um, after that, we did the trunk retreat and I did a photo booth. So everybody got a photo, a free photo. That's the way I give back to the community. So I don't charge any money for it. And I, and I, I guess I feel that by helping, you know, you give before you receive, yeah. but I, but it really wasn't about that. I think when you offer a donation to someone, you're doing it just because you want to, but yeah. yes, if it grows the business, fabulous. Right. And it just helps get your name out in the community. Is that and something though that agents miss that really let's just give back to the community and trust that it comes back to us? Yes. That's yeah. really the bottom line. And I was kind of surprised that here's what's very interesting. So some realtor, realtors or um, other brokerages in the community did get involved and they jumped on it. I don't make it competitive like just mm -hmm. Keller Williams. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, no, you guys get one. But not everyone one did. Not all of the other, like Caldwell Bank or some of them didn't want to participate, which I thought was unusual. So they, they weren't they weren't a positive supporter of it, or they were a non-supporter. Let me just sure. say that. So yeah. it became evident that the other brokerages, it was just a fun thing. It was for everyone. Right. They could yeah. pass out candy. Everyone really got an opportunity because their name, think about it, 58 polls downtown, they got a free ad all month. That's and right. the earlier they did it, people loved it. The only thing they had to do was maintain their space yeah. and then take it down within seven days after Halloween. I love so, it. Yeah. And everyone did. They did a beautiful cleanup, followed the rules. I checked all the displays. So what advice would you give to somebody that wants to do an event like this? Cause there's a lot of details, but what advice would you give? Um, get a committee ask for help. I kind of did it the one man band and I, I'm not good. Not that I'm not good at asking for help. I didn't realize that people would be generous with their pocketbook and not want to do the actual display. I thought this, the the display would be the fun thing. So I've asked the art, like the artists, the senior artists from Kenton High School, to jump in, and the Girl Scouts to help make some of the displays. 
So I would get those folks early. So some people, I also went around and knocked on a few doors and dropped off flyers to see if they wanted to put up a display or help with them. Like people, a lot of people go to town for Halloween. So I think you need more than just one. That's my advice. <laughs> get, get a committee of people, ask for help. That's good advice. Marilyn, yeah. thank you for sharing it with Welcome. us and walking us through. It's a cool event. There's a lot of detail that's spelled out in the playbook if it's something you want to do. Marilyn, thank you. We appreciate you You're so welcome. much. Thank you. Thanks for